Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Coach Coco and I love volleyball. So much so my channel is filled with tips, tricks, hacks, and anything you can ever need to know about volleyball. So today I thought it would be really, really great to talk about the importance of talking to your setter. I know that a lot of you guys are really learning how to play on a team. You're learning how to communicate with your teammates and you may be even learning your place on the team. But talking to your setter is a one, especially if you are somebody who is playing front row or you're looking to get more hits or you're looking to build your relationship with your setter. With all that, let's get right into it. So I've played on a lot of different volleyball teams throughout my life. And throughout that, I've met a lot of different setters from different personalities, different setting styles, and all of that. And every single opportunity that I've had to interact with a setter, I knew how important it was to talk to them. When I mean by talking to the setter, I mean number one, communicating with the setter so you both have an understanding of the type of set that you like. We've all seen volleyball players who play and the setter gives them something and it's something that's either difficult to hit because maybe they're not advanced in skill yet, or they just don't have an understanding of the tempo of the set or where their set's going to be. And remember that old saying, a closed mouth doesn't get fed? That is so very true. It's true because if you don't communicate with your setter, how will they know what to give you? You have to make sure to have that open line of communication and it can look like something like this. Hey Ashley, you know, thank you so much for everything you do. Um, you know, I personally, my approach, I tend to get there a little bit quicker. So I'm looking for something with a little bit faster tempo. So can we stay after practice for a little bit and try something out? Great. That's something that is, it's, I like to use it like a compliment sandwich. And a compliment sandwich is something that you can use in multiple facets of your life. It's when you, A, you give that compliment, B, you give that concern that you're looking for, and C, you close it out with a compliment, the compliment sandwich. So, hey, um, thank you so much for the, what you're doing. B, I'm looking for a set with a little bit of a faster tempo, and C, once again, do you want to stay after practice? Because I'd really like to get some one-on-one -on -one time with you. That is something that may not be, not going to come up to them as sensitive because sometimes when we're all learning, we're all learning. Sometimes when we're all learning and you're coming to someone and you're like, hey, I'm looking for this. We want to make sure that we're coming to them in a place of collaboration and not to come from a place of criticism, especially since you guys are on the same playing field and you're learning the same. Coming with a place of collaboration is, hey, I want to collaborate with you as a player versus I need you to set faster. I need you to set higher. It was too short for me. We want to make sure to have that positive communication because it can lead to a positive relationship because the setter is ultimately during the game when they're getting the pass, they're going to set who they deem in that split second, the most appropriate. And who do you think they're going to set more likely the person that they a have had an established relationship with also that they know what kind of set they have and they've spent time working it out. Yeah. So we want to be able to have that established relationship so that way things like that can make it easier for you when you're... Now let's say that your team has more than one setter. This happens quite often. Let's say you're running a 4-2 or you're running a 6-2. Okay, cool. You also still want to stay with both setters. I know that sometimes when you're running a 6-2 and the rotation, it changes. That can really mess up your game a little bit, especially if it's a setter that sets a little bit differently than you tend to hit. Um, so make sure that you are communicating with both setters so that way you guys can have that, you know, you, under you understand. So even if the rotation changes, it's not something that's going to completely completely throw you off because remember we want you to be prepared but we also want you to you know have a good relationship with all of your teammates as you start to get a little bit higher in skill level there are going to be certain sets that are have different tempos different speeds different heights and they're going to be volleyball plays and that's a whole nother video that we're going to continue on in a different a different time however when you start to learn those kind of plays and tempos and things like that um and you're starting to learn the sets that have a numerical value assigned to them it can be daunting as a hitter especially if you're just now learning your three or four step approach and you're like oh my god now i have to go into this left and I have to pivot to the right and then I'm turning it can be a little bit daunting however what your setters learning how to set those those tempo balls as well so if you communicate with them and you communicate with the coach there is nothing wrong with coming a little early and trying to get some one-on-one -on -one, um, hits there's nothing wrong with 
doing things live with the setter. Now here's the thing though. We want to make it as game-like as possible. When you get a ball that is tossed to you like in hitting lines, do you think that that ball is going to be a little bit more perfect than it would be coming from your live setter? Yes. So when you're in a game or an in-game scenario, like a scrimmage, you have the ball that's being passed to the passer, that ball is then being passed to the setter, then it's going to you. The best way to get the most authentic experience is number one, the scrimmage or in-game, where communication can look like something like, was that set high enough? Was it a little bit off the net? Do you want a little bit more on the net? Making sure to have an understanding of the kind of sets that you particularly like is also very helpful. For instance, players who are typically are learning their approach or they're learning their three step or four step approach and they haven't learned the, quite the tempo, um, might like something that is off the net. Players who have been playing for a little bit, you've found your rhythm, you know exactly what you want and where you want it. They might think like things a little bit more tight to the net. If there's a double block, they might want things a little bit off to the net. So just having an understanding of what you want can help you further communicate exactly what you need. So we don't want it to be like confusing language where you're like, I don't know what I want, you know, just put it high you know experimenting or doing some things that you and your setter are working out and understanding also involving your coach by saying hey coach I'm trying to really understand the, the tempo and, I'm, and I, I would really like a couple of minutes after practice with the setter if that's okay if you can toss her a ball that would be great or even better get a passer get a setter and you and say hey coach you know um, I really love you to observe my approach as I'm approaching the ball and I would like you to see it and then have the coach toss the ball to the passer the passer give an authentic pass to the setter the setter set it to you uh, set it to you so that way it can be as as in game as possible even without having a full scrimmage so that is something that can be very very helpful that will be able to um, advance your hitting especially after practice or you know before practice something that can help you move you along the line of having an understanding of how your setter hit so your setter sets so that way you have a better understanding so i really do hope that this video does give you some advice or it helps you have you some language so that way you can talk to your setter so you guys can understand both of you can understand how important it is for you guys to collaborate because with collaboration we see great volleyball things so I hope that you like this video. Please like, comment, subscribe. And if you have any video ideas that you would like to see, please, please, please put them in the comments. I really love reading you all's comments. I know that we've been doing volleyball for a long time, but I would love to see what you guys are looking for. So please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.